soil, back into the same soil, not somewhere else. Always you bury him in your land, never in somebody else's land because you ate from this land. Today you're buying everything from the store and eating, you don't know where it's coming from. So, burial is not a good thing to do now. At that time there's a certain process and to see that it happens as quickly as possible, always salt and turmeric was put so that quickly it dissipates into the soil. But cremation is a good thing to do because it closes the chapter. You will see this when there's death in the family, people are crying and hollering and doing all kinds of things. The moment cremation happens, people will come back home, everything is quiet. Nobody is crying for some time because suddenly the truth has sank and it's over, the game is up. This is not only for you, this is also for the disembodied being who's just exited because he is also in that illusion that he can get back and that stops and that's a good thing. And there are many rituals to see that you influence, that you can somehow put a drop of sweetness into that non-discerning mind so that the sweetness will multiply manifold and they will live comfortably or they will live in a, a certain self-induced heaven. That's the idea behind the rituals, if it is done properly. Today it's become a… they are asking you, you… the dead need footwear, an umbrella. <laughs> Someone who's got the body here does not need footwear for sure. <laughs> the man who is doing the ritual needs the footwear. I don't know why they cannot say, I need the footwear. At least you would buy them the right size. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but this was a this was a tradition earlier also. People in many uh, civilizations used to put all those things which belong to people with with the dead body as a body, or also sometimes they sacrifice you know children and wives <coughs> and they send it with them. I think that the, anything which belonged to the person somehow you know that's where I probably this this footwear came from and, and it's a distorted version of that. No, the footwear is given to the man who does the ritual, not put in the cremation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about is, there is a… I'm sure all of you have heard of this word called runanabhanda. Have you heard this? Yeah. Runanabhanda means physical relationship. Wherever you touch anything, it can be because of parentage, it can be because of sexual relationships, it can be just because you held somebody's hand, or it is because you change each other's clothes. In many ways, two bodies will generate what is called as runanubhanda. That means there is a certain commonality which begins to happen. So when somebody dies, traditionally you're looking at in how many ways you can completely obliterate this and spread it around. The idea of putting the ashes in Ganga or in the ocean is simply so that it doesn't stay in one place and create runanubhanda for you. It must be dispersed as widely as possible so that you don't develop runanabandha with one who is departed. You must break the relationship for you to continue your life. If this runanabandha is not properly broken as it is happening in modern societies, it will definitely affect your physio physiological structure, your psychological structure. <clears throat> Particularly children are generally… children up to eight years of age are immune to these things. They will not be affected by this, nature has given them that protection. Adolescents will be most affected by these things when we do not take care of the dead properly. And in such a common, dry, mechanical way of scraping your ashes and we should be cut off. I don't think possible. Uh, see, emotion is another aspect. Emotion is a secondary aspect to your life. Because that person was physically present here, because of variety of relationships that you hold, and above all, uh, our physical sameness in so many ways, either because of blood relationship or because of sexual relationship. And today, if that person is no more, the healthy way, if you, these things are eliminated, what will happen is you will cherish the beauty of that relationship rather than suffering it. But if the Runanabhanda is there, why should you forget that? You must cherish the relationship forever. It says that uh, if you praise 
your bread, you could come with the mass. Rana is not going with the mass. Only the air is going with the mass. Air is a certain physical quantity that you're taking in for the physical survival of your physical self. But the Pran is what we were talking in terms of life. The whole cosmos is life. Now this bubble. <laughs> Only second question, the last question. <laughs> We've had the most fascinating conversation this evening between Prasun Joshi and Sadhguru and we'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. The Kashi DVD that we spoke about earlier in the evening is available and so are books of uh, Prasun Joshi. Uh, here are a few announcements about uh, Sadhguru's upcoming programs in India. He will be conducting a three day that has been offered. It contains a guided meditation called Isha Kriya which you can practice at home at your own pace. You can also download it from the website. Yeah, this one for this fabulous poetry, which uh, says uh, so many things that uh, you could say in words, not you. And it's uh, wonderful that without him, probably so many things I would never see in one city.